The film starts in a harsh and cruel prison, where corrupt guards rule over a terrible place. Inside, prisoners are forced to fight in brutal matches set up by the evil warden for the sick entertainment of rich viewers online. These illegal fights have one rule, they go on until one fighter dies. In another scene, we see Wyatt, who has just picked up his son from school. When they get home, Wyatt's wife, Mary, notices a bruise on their child's face. Worried, Mary asks Wyatt how it happened. Wyatt shrugs it off, saying it was just a normal kid's fight, not seeing how serious it is. Mary, however, is disappointed and thinks Wyatt should have done more to prevent the violence. Wyatt goes to his friend Steve, who works for the FBI, for advice. Steve, who has worked with Wyatt before to fight crime, tells him about an interesting chance. Even though Wyatt was kicked out of the Special Forces two years ago for being too harsh and reckless, Steve offers him a job to investigate the prison we saw earlier. Steve explains that the prison is full of corruption, and many inmates have died in strange ways. In just one month, 12 inmates have died. The FBI tried to warn the prison's wardens, but they covered it up. It looks like the warden is behind these deaths, using his power to control the inmates. Steve then suggests a bold plan to Wyatt. He should go undercover as a prisoner to find out the truth about the horrible events. If Wyatt succeeds, he will get a promotion in the FBI, a big bonus, and a scholarship for his college education. Steve asks Wyatt to decide quickly if he will take on this dangerous mission. After thinking it over, Wyatt calls Steve the next day and agrees to the mission. The idea of getting a job after being out of work for two years helps him decide. Before starting this dangerous task, Wyatt says goodbye to his family, making up a story that he will be away for work for the next few weeks. He meets Steve near the police station to finalize their plans. To get into the prison, Steve tells Wyatt to cause trouble and get the police's attention. Without wasting time, Wyatt hijacks a police car. This bold move leads to a wild chase with police officers following him. Eventually, he gets caught, which brings him one step closer to his mission inside the prison. Wyatt is found guilty of stealing the car and attacking a police officer. He is quickly taken to the prison. When he arrives, he and other new prisoners are lined up to get a stern talk from the warden, the boss of the prison. The warden, with a commanding presence, says that the prison is his territory and all prisoners must obey his rules. Any disobedience will be punished severely. Wyatt and the others are then taken to their cells. As night falls, the warden returns to watch the brutal fights where prisoners fight until one dies. During the fights, the warden's deputy tells him about Wyatt, a new prisoner who used to be in the special forces and is known for being tough. The warden gets excited, eager to see Wyatt's skills. He orders his deputy to set up a test for Wyatt the next day. The story goes back to the intense prison fights. Two fighters battle fiercely until an inmate, named O'Reilly, wins. The next morning, Wyatt and the other inmates are taken to the exercise yard for their daily workout. Wyatt becomes friends with his cellmate O'Reilly, the fighter from the night before, and also meets Tommy, another inmate. While outside, Wyatt sees Airy, one of the prisoners, being bullied by two others. Feeling a sense of justice, Wyatt steps in and stops the bullying by getting rid of the aggressors. His brave action is noticed by others. Later in the afternoon, as the inmates get ready to return to their cells, Wyatt is suddenly stopped by the deputy warden. He is then approached by the same two inmates who had bullied Airy earlier. It becomes clear that the deputy warden set up this meeting to test Wyatt's fighting skills. To everyone's surprise, Wyatt quickly handles the situation, easily beating the two inmates. After this fight, Wyatt is called to the warden's office. The warden tells Wyatt that he wants to make him a top fighter for an upcoming event. He stresses that all inmates must follow his orders, warning that disobedience will lead to severe and deadly punishment. The next day, Mary visits Wyatt in prison, wanting to know why he ended up there. Frustrated and trying to protect her from the truth, Wyatt dismisses her worries, telling her not to think about it. He then asks her to leave and says he doesn't want any more visits. Meanwhile, the warden has a secret conversation with his business partner. It turns out the warden has a deal with this partner, who runs an online streaming platform. This platform shows the warden's illegal prison fights. The warden makes a lot of money from these fights, and he tells his partner about Wyatt, a former Special Forces soldier. Interested, his partner urges the warden to set up a fight between Wyatt and another inmate that night. The potential for money and entertainment is too tempting for them to resist. Soon after, the warden's officers take Wyatt by force and throw him into the fight arena. 
he is immediately attacked by another prisoner, his opponent for the night. During this brutal fight, the warden's business partner watches with pleasure as Wyatt shows his strength and skill, finally defeating and killing his opponent. After winning, Wyatt faces the warden again. The warden praises Wyatt's fighting ability and calls him one of his favorite fighters. But Wyatt refuses to keep fighting in matches where lives are lost. He hates the grim reality of the prison and the warden's rule. The warden, showing his power, reminds Wyatt that the prison is his territory and that he won't tolerate disobedience. The next day, Wyatt finds a chance to record the information he has gathered. He writes it down on a piece of paper and cleverly hides it inside an old book. An elderly man, who brings new books from the outside library for the inmates to read, unknowingly carries this important message. The paper is hidden in the book and will be taken outside the prison with the old man. When the book reaches the library, Steve's men quickly retrieve it and find Wyatt's hidden message. The important information finally gets to Steve, who is now at the FBI office. In a new scene, Wyatt talks with his new friends, O'Reilly and Tommy. O'Reilly sees a bruise on Wyatt's face and understands that Wyatt has been fighting in prison. As they get ready for lunch, a big prisoner walks up and asks who O'Reilly is. O'Reilly says his name is Milton, but everyone in the prison calls him the president because of his strong fighting skills and unbeaten record. Everyone respects and fears him. Suddenly, Airy accidentally bumps into Milton's food, making Milton very angry. Wyatt sees this and asks Milton to forgive Airy, saying it was an accident. But instead of calming down, Milton gets even angrier because no one has ever stood up to him before. The situation is tense, but Tommy quickly apologizes for Wyatt, explaining that Wyatt is new and doesn't know the prison rules yet. Later that night, the warden confronts Wyatt, demanding that he fight again. Wyatt doesn't want it because he thinks the fights are cruel. But the warden shows Wyatt a photo of his wife, Mary, and his son, threatening their safety if Wyatt doesn't agree. Worried about his family, Wyatt agrees to fight. Wyatt's next opponent is a tough prisoner from Asia. The fight is hard, but Wyatt wins. As Wyatt is taken back to his cell, the warden reminds him that his family will be in danger if he disobeys. This makes Wyatt very angry because he realizes how his loved ones are being used to control him. Meanwhile, Mary talks to Steve, asking why Wyatt was put in prison. She is worried and confused because of how Wyatt acted when she last saw him. Steve promises to help get Wyatt out of prison. In another scene, Wyatt is working out with other prisoners. Suddenly, Airy collapses because Milton has stabbed him in the back. Milton is still angry about the food incident. Wyatt, feeling a strong sense of justice, challenges Milton to a deadly fight in the arena. During the night, a female warden visits Wyatt. She was sent by the main warden to try to seduce him as a reward for his good fighting and the money he has made. But Wyatt, loyal to his wife, refuses her. The next day, Wyatt continues his secret activity of writing down important information. He hides the paper in a book and asks an old man to take it to the library. Tommy secretly watches Wyatt through the cell window. As night comes, two officers return to the cells. This time, they pick O'Reilly to fight. O'Reilly, scared but having no choice, is taken to the arena. There, he prepares to fight Milton, a very strong opponent. Milton quickly overpowers O'Reilly, and O'Reilly sadly meets the same fate as many others in these deadly fights. The next morning, Wyatt and the other inmates go back to their usual routines. Wyatt becomes worried because he hasn't seen O'Reilly. He asks another inmate, who tells him that O'Reilly was killed by Milton in the fight last night. Wyatt is deeply sad and silent, mourning his friend. Soon after, two officers take Wyatt to his cell, where the main warden is waiting. The warden has found the hidden paper in the library book. He demands that Wyatt tell him who he is working for, but Wyatt refuses to speak. As a result, Wyatt is taken to an isolation room for questioning. The warden's men show their cruelty by killing the old man who had innocently taken the book with the hidden paper. The scene changes to a dark place where Wyatt is being tortured by the cruel warden and his deputy. Wyatt, in great pain, asks how the warden found out about the hidden book. Tommy comes in and admits that he betrayed Wyatt, telling the warden everything in hopes of getting out of prison. But the warden kills Tommy instead, showing no mercy. Meanwhile, Steve is worried because he can't reach Wyatt. He visits Mary's house to tell her the real reason Wyatt is in prison. Steve explains that Wyatt did not commit any crime but is working on an important mission for the FBI. 
Wyatt took this risky job to support Mary and their son because he didn't want to be jobless and struggling with money. Steve, fearing for their safety, makes a plan to move Mary and her son to a safe place. As Mary packs their things, the deputy warden and his men burst into the house and start shooting at Steve. Luckily, Steve is wearing a bulletproof vest and is not hurt. He quickly calls the FBI, asking them to arrest the corrupt warden and his men that night. The tension rises as Mary and her son are taken to the prison by the warden. The warden wants to use them to make Wyatt tell him who sent him. Before this happens, the warden forces Mary and her son to watch Wyatt fight Milton. When Wyatt enters the arena, he is shocked to see his family being held by the warden. To protect them, Wyatt knows he must win the fight. The battle between Wyatt and Milton is tough. To make it more brutal, the warden throws a baseball bat into the arena. Using his special forces training, Wyatt skillfully defeats Milton but does not kill him. Wyatt does not want his wife and son to see such violence. This makes the warden very angry. He enters the arena and attacks Wyatt, insisting that every fight must end in death. He threatens to kill Wyatt in front of his family if Wyatt does not follow his cruel orders. Outside the prison, Steve and the FBI have set up a tactical operation surrounding the area. Some FBI agents enter the prison and quickly take down the corrupt wardens. Inside the arena, Wyatt is about to be executed by the warden. Suddenly, Steve shoots the deputy warden, distracting him. Taking advantage of this, Wyatt takes control of the situation. He tells the warden that he works for Steve and that the warden's corrupt rule is over. As Steve and his team close in, the warden is arrested thanks to the combined efforts of Wyatt, Steve, and the FBI. Later. Wyatt's hard work and success in the mission are recognized. He is offered a job with the FBI and given a big bonus. This new opportunity gives Wyatt a new purpose, and Mary and their son are very proud. The difficult times of unemployment are over, and a brighter future is ahead. The once powerful warden is now a prisoner in the same prison he used to control, waiting for his death sentence. The corrupt staff and warden have been replaced by honest people who will ensure justice and fairness in the prison. With the mission completed, the story ends. The film leaves viewers with a sense of justice, hope, and a reminder of the strength and victory of the human spirit even against oppression and corruption. So the moral of the story is, sometimes the best way to get a job and save your family is to punch your way through a prison full of corrupt guards and fight club wannabes. Who knew job hunting could be so action-packed?